All right. Hey, welcome everybody to the Thursday night team call. Um, I have a special, a couple of special guests that want to say hi real quick before we get started. And there's a reason for it, and it's going to be an invitation for you to go check out um, on my YouTube channel. I put it on there. But Carl Deichler, he does a monthly call with the success starters, people who have success club in their first month. And the last one that he did, like he nailed it. Like he was on point, you know. We, we, you know when you listen to somebody and they like they got it together, like they hit everything that they should be saying and it's just everything makes sense. That's what Carl did on the success starter call. Um, you know, I had a coach on it, uh, so so I go on and listen with them. And then I had um, Jeff Hill talked about it and was sharing how um, you know it's it's a message that everybody, that everybody needs to hear. And so he talked at the end. Well, he talked about the four vital behaviors. And really simplify this business. So if you haven't watched that, go watch it on my YouTube channel. It's like probably two videos back. But uh, you'll see a picture of Carl and I and then four vital behaviors on the thumbnail. So make a mental note to go listen to that. And then also, with that being said, um, these guys just want to say hi. At the end, Carl tells us we're, we're superheroes. So these guys wanted to show you their, super, <laughs> their superhero outfits. We got Batman and Batgirl here. So they're embracing their inner superhero. Okay, you guys can go. And Carl is, uh, was inviting us, uh, telling us basically that we're superheroes to people. Like we have some, an amazing gift to give people uh, that can help them you know, with their health, with their fitness, with their financial, with their relationships, all different parts of, of their life we have an, an option and a tool for them. So, okay, you guys go play your superhero, okay? So they, you know, he talked about that. Um, and and the importance of the job that we have and so I want to invite you guys to go listen to that as well uh, I'm gonna go over just a couple of things real quick before we start uh, full on with this this team call about creating a vision for your team so I'm gonna share my screen can you shut my door when you go out um, right here I'm gonna read something for you guys so that you can see it I put it in the team page but I'm gonna show it to you and it has to do with Summit, and I know a lot of people are getting ready to go to Summit, um, wondering about the emails, like Beachbody, um, the events team from Beachbody is like overwhelmed <laughs> with the amount of emails coming in, and, and I'll have to admit, I sent a couple people <laughs> to go send emails to them as well, but they had an update on um, this specific uh, topic because they're letting these out. So this is the deal with, um, the, the wait list so that you guys can understand it. I'll read it so we can, can talk about it. This is from Jeff Hill. Okay, great news. We will soon be sending out invites to everyone that enjoyed the summit wait list at the 195 price point. So everybody, so you'll want to make sure that you watch your email, uh, your junk mail and your normal and check it daily. So keep a close eye on your inbox. Since track registrations for the event have opened, we have been able to gather a more accurate attendee headcount for this year's epic event. And the good news is, we will have a number of additional spots that we will be making available. If you registered at the 245 point, please hang tight. Uh, when we invite coaches in mass like this, it results in heavy traffic to the in event e inbox with a lot of questions, right? So here's what it is below. We're gonna go through it and make sure no one has any questions. If you do have a question, please put it in the chat box so I can read it um, and we can talk about it. I'll, I'll make sure to pop my chat box up here so I can see it real quick. Okay, so it says Summit 2016 invites will be sent from events at reg, um, regonline.com. So make sure that you go to your email and mark that as a safe sender. Um, if your invitation has expired, we cannot reissue your invite. So please put yourself back on the Summit wait list if you still want to attend. So I know that sounds like a little frustrating because some of you guys have waited an entire year, but just like it said, it will all be open. Like, Put yourself on the wait list, everybody's gonna get their ticket, so they'll have enough room for you. So once you've completed your track registration, you cannot change your track or workout, so once you choose that, you can't change it. So we, if you haven't registered for your track yet, we as a team have chosen the blue track, and then no specific hall. It could be C, D, or the Grand Ballroom. I suggest that we just kind of split up in that aspect so that we can hear from a number of different speakers and have you guys come back and teach on the topics and what you guys learn. Um, it won't do us any good to all learn the exact same thing. We should learn from as many people as we can as a team so that we can come back and teach each other. 
So, but we did choose the blue track so that we can bump into each other and see each other in the hallways, eat lunch together and all that fun stuff. So, um, if you are requesting a summit ticket transfer, it'll take a little bit of time. So what that means if, if somebody, I'll just throw a name out there. Let's say Justin bought a, a ticket last year and he can't go. Uh, that's not the case. Well, let's say he did that. He could transfer his ticket by emailing events to another coach. So that's going to take some time. You do that at the same thing, events, but they're really overwhelmed right now. So it'll take some time to transfer that just so that you guys know. And then please note this right here, the 125 ticket type. So if you bought your ticket at the 125 price during summit last year, during that first small window, those are non-transferable and non-refundable. So that was clearly stated at the time that it was released. And I remember that. So our goal is to accommodate our coaches the best of our ability and our priority right now is to get as many of you as possible to this summit in July. Um, please understand due to the massive numbers, we need to honor these policies. So there you go. That's the, the info on summit. So we want you guys there at summit with us. Uh, the next thing I'm going to announce real quick is uh, I'm not going to put the website here because this is still inside of our team right now and not released outside and our team calls all go on YouTube. So we're having a big team event training that, I'm co-hosting together with Shay Stanford, Miguel uh, Carrasco. He's actually put it together. Um, and we're going to, and, and there's a guest speaker coming as well. And it's going to be an absolutely amazing event. Uh, like you're not going to want to miss it. Like you, you want to be there. Uh, it's going to be Thursday. So if you've never been to Summit, Summit starts Thursday night with a kickoff celebration. And there's some workouts later in the day, but this event is in the morning. I can't remember the exact time, but it's going to be, it's like 9 to 12 or something like that, 9 to 11. So it's in the morning of Summit. So if you want to come to that, that's where I plan on. It's pretty much our only opportunity to get a team picture for all those that come. And it's also, uh, like I've spoken at five summits. This will be my fifth summit where I get to teach or speak. What I like about this is we don't have an outline and not directed what to speak about by Beachbody. We're going to... We're going to tell you guys what we want to say for at, the, at this training. So uh, we're pretty stoked about that. We want you to come to that. And if you haven't registered yet, um, if you go to, um, if you're my personally sponsored, if you come to the PS Coach page or the Team Dynasty page, go to the photos. You'll be able to find the event. It's called Ignite Nashville. You'll be able to find it in there. So I'm super excited about what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to pull up this um, thing here. Is the screen black? Oh, dang. You guys can't see my screen? <laughs> the whole time I'm like, I'm, I'm chatting about it. You guys can't see it. Well, I didn't really, I just read what I was talking about anyway. So <laughs> I guess we're okay. But let me stop the share and re-get it up there. There you guys are. <laughs> I thought you guys could totally see my screen. Let me try again. Um, and then I'll check before I start talking if you guys can see my screen. Can you guys see this screen now? Okay. <laughs> awesome. So, once again, that's one of those things where, guys, this business, don't overcomplicate things. Just have fun with it. You're going to make mistakes, but as long as you have fun and you believe in what you're doing, you can build an amazing team. So, it went away I, again. It's black. It's black again. Something's weird then. Uh, Francisco, let me know if you can see this one. Mine's good. You can see it, Sean? Yeah. I can see that everything. Mine's good, too. Okay, so it might just be a couple of people have it. So it's being recorded, so if you can't see it and you want to come back and see it, um, you'll be able to see what we have here. Uh, but what I want to talk about today, uh, let me get a drink first, is creating a team vision statement. And we're going to do this, this uh, training kind of, we're going to go through this pretty quick. I mean, get some, some basic guidelines put together. Um, maybe we can create something a little bit more clear for our team. But what I really want you guys to take away from this as we do that is this is what you get to create for you and your future team. Whether you have a, a coach or not on your team, like the vision that you start to create right now is, is what you're going to create. It's what you're going to attract. Like what you're talking about, what you want, as you put it out there, that's what you're going to be able to bring into your life. And then I love this quote from Steve Jobs. And it says, if you're working on something exciting that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you, right? And so just to speak from just personal experience, I've, I've been with Team Beachbody now for five years, and nobody has ever had to push me in this business. I mean, I've had accountability partners, like I have an accountability partner, Barbie, and we just made a huge push for 15 star. 
uh, and our deadline was today. And we didn't make it. She didn't have to push me to that. We moved closer, both of our teams. But what you know, she didn't have to push me to do that. But you know, today she encouraged me. You know, said, "Hey, let's let's keep that vision right in front of us. Let's not slow down and let's keep going. And we can still make this happen, right?" So when you have a vision for your business and your life, you're pulled ahead. And I want to recognize a, a newer coach. I say newer. Anybody that's a year and under is newer to me. Like, cause a year is still brand spanking new in this business. Because if you haven't read GoPro, you'll learn that this business, it takes seven years to become a professional. Not seven years of complaining why it's not working at four months and not doing anything about learning the skills. Seven years of actively growing and learning the skills uh, that it takes to be successful in this business. So what's good, like to go seven years to become a professional, you've got to have a vision that pulls you towards that, right? And to simplify it before we identify a vision and talk about the steps to create your vision, what I want you guys to know is that it, a lot of us are overcomplicating it. We're trying to figure out how to do everything perfectly instead of just knowing why we're doing it and inviting people to come on the journey with us, okay? So if you, to be able to do it for seven years straight or like me for five years straight, it's, got, it's, it's a clear vision that continually pulls us forward. and. Um, I haven't revitalized, I guess is the word, a vision uh, for a while, so that's why I kind of wanted to do this, just so you guys understand my inner thinking. Like, I want to teach it to you guys, but it's also necessary that I make changes in this, that my vision is not as clear uh, for the next 10 years as it was for, you know, when I, when I visualized what five years would look like for our business. Like, I was very clear on that, and I'm a little bit cloudy on what the next 10 years are going to look like, so it's important that I, right? get clear on my vision, but that I also teach you guys um, how to create the vision for your team and, and be able to get that, you know, in front of you guys so you guys don't have to be pushed. So no one has to push you to hit Success Club Monthly, so nobody has to push you to hit Diamond, so nobody has to push you to go to Elite. Like, you should have a vision that's so clear that it pulls you towards that. And I was going into an example, and I'm going to talk about Lisa Matthews, okay? And, and I, I watched the video. She did an, it was an apology video. She was in a, our new coach um, training group, a coach basics, and she was sharing what worked for her. And it, it came across as it was really easy for her to, to get um, coaches and people to join her right now. But um, this video that she made, what it talked about was it, it really impacted me and it helped me realize that how, like how clear her vision is to, to see what she's doing, what she's putting into it. She's been a coach for, you know, almost, it's got to be seven, eight months now, you know, and it's now just barely, right, that people are starting to come to her. But she has shown up like 100% for the past, you know, eight months and even like 10 times that the last 60 days as I talked to her about my vision for us being a 15-star diamond team and I thought that she would be one of the people that have that in her. Like she stepped up in that aspect and went from a brand new at Emerald to like she's like days away from a diamond coach now. But the thing behind it was she's, she's working on her business like 10, 8 to 10 hours a day. Okay. Like she's so passionate about it. And it, and it makes it think of like people ask me how much time I work per day in my business. And I have a set block hour of, you know, from 10 to 3 right now. When I was first starting, when I worked 12 hours a day, I was working from 8 30 till 12 30. One o'clock in the morning sometimes. You know, five hours every single night, seven days a week, right? It's because I had that vision of building this elite five-star diamond team. And remember, this is my first year. And being able to bring my wife home and then bring myself home as well for my job. It was so clear to me that I, that's what I wanted to do. So I see that right there in Lisa. Like she, every like hour that she has possible. And she's a, she's a mom. She has kids all over in all of her Facebook posts, you can see it, but that vision is what's pulling her to do that. So, um, you know, it, when you get that clear, it's like, it becomes something you're so passionate about. So exciting, right? It's so exciting to her. Um, and, and for her, for example, she, she gets very few days with her husband because he works away. So she's, she's by herself with the kids. So that vision that she has of building this team of women like her is what's pulling her forward, uh, into her business. So, 
I, I can't see all of you guys, but how many of you guys would like to have a vision that pulls you forward where you don't ever have to be pushed? Like you wake up and it's all you think about. Awesome. So that's the goal for me today. Um, I'm going to recommend a book right here, first of all, because you're never going to be able to get dialed in on this vision unless you can get to know yourself a little bit. So if you can like shut out the noise of, of confusion and all the training that's out there and, and your regular job and kids screaming and all that stuff, if you don't take enough time to slow down and realize what it is you want out of life, write out those goals, journal about your, what you're grateful for, visualize your goals, give yourself affirmations, do your workouts, right? And all of that stuff, you're never going to be able to be clear on that vision. It's going to, like, even if you, like, wrote it out, let's say you write out this vision, if you don't, as we call it in this picture, win your day, you're, you're not, that vision's going to be gone because you're not going to be looking at it, you're not going to be focused on it and, and seeing it for your life. So if you want to dial in on this, like, I would give you, like, the tips on what I do, but the best way is from a book called The Miracle Morning. So Miracle Morning, I want you guys to grab that book and I want you to read it. And I'm going to give you guys a, a, just a small um, thing that's how, like a testimonial of how this has helped me. For example, <clears throat> I've always done a few of these, work out and do personal development and read over my goals. That's what I always did for the past five years. But once I took a little bit more time to actually sit in silence, meditate, pray, slow breathing, deep slow breathing. Uh, do my affirmations and visualize my goal and the goals for the team. And then, of course, I've always done the exercise and I've always done the reading, but actually writing, like, I've only done it for two weeks now, but the first, um, the first week, something amazing happened. So I go over to the Anytime Fitness, okay, and I have my headphones in and I do my body use workout uh, on my on-demand. I've been going there ever since I shattered my collarbone and I needed to use some equipment to relieve some of the weight stress from my arm when I had a, when I was in a sling. And so I do it there. And I've maybe talked to four or five people regularly, like I'll say hi when they come in, fist bump them, we'll like flex at each other, <laughs> whatever it is you do, you know, when you, when you, you say hi to somebody you, you see every day. I started doing this with my daughters before they go to school. We put a little affirmation up on the door. We made them a little folder to write in, to write their thoughts, and we just told them to write one thing they're grateful for. We're reading The Greatest Salesman, Scrolls, and um, we're having them read those affirmations out, and then we, we pray together, um, and we talk about, uh, visualize out loud uh, what we want our summer to look like, just something simple and small like that right now. I've done that with them, and then I, do, I go in and do another half hour by myself, but I do it with them in seven minutes every day, seven minutes, real quick, and then I do my own. That week, I had somebody every single day at the gym come up to me and like start a conversation with me. And I can't say what it is that made that happen other than I must have been putting off a different vibe or energy than I normally did that made me more um, like, oh, what's the word? Like people wanted to confront me, come talk to me, uh, ask me questions. And, and they were anywhere from like a 30-year-old mom to a 78-year-old guy that I helped use the pull-up assist machine with, right? And, and I got to talk to him about his health and, and what I do. Well, all, that all came from doing this, right? And also one thing I've seen is I have pushed for 15 Star Diamond probably 15 times in my career as a coach. In this last 60-day push I did, um, every time when I, when I pushed for it and didn't make it, I, was, I just, this is what I did, and I want you guys to understand. I would just be like, oh, well, like, like we have a great business. It's growing at a tremendous pace. You know, I'm happy. I would have all these excuses, right? I'm happy where our second business center is growing, our third, and Gabby's business is doing good. Like it's a, like totally okay. Today, because I've been so focused on this vision and, and self-aware by doing this, like I was like, no. When I woke up, I was like, no, this is not okay. I'm not going to back off of this. Like we got to push just as hard this week. And I took more action than I normally take. So I want you guys to get that book and I want you to read it. It's really short and easy to read, but it's going to help you guys be able to take, whether it's five minutes in the morning, 15 minutes or 30 minutes to really dial in on your vision and what you want for your business and your life. That's something that you have to do 
because for you to be able to achieve the goals that you guys want in this business, you guys have to become leaders and you're going to have to create a vision that other people that will compel other people to work hard with you at. So I want you guys to get in some kind of routine in the morning to win your day. I like have so many testimonials of this, but I have a diamond coach that fell out like a, a year ago and she's working on getting it back. We had an hour conversation the other day and I, I told her to read this book. She read it and she came back to us like two weeks later. She's like, Oh my gosh, like I've been doing that. I've been getting up at four o'clock in the morning and like, and she has four kids and she runs real estate and she also is a beach body coach and she has, Oh, I already said kids. So, and, and her husband works away from the house. So she does all those roles. She's like, I feel like a top coach. Like I can see people coming to me. I can see people wanting me to be their leader from doing this, from getting up at four o'clock and doing this. I do that. And then I crush, I like I get done in the first hour and a half. What I, what used to take me like all day long scattered throughout the day. So that book, yes, is called Miracle Morning. So the purpose of your, of your vision statement is to stretch your boundaries and your comfort zone and enable the people within your organization a sense of what they could have, what they're going for and what their life could look like um, if they engage in that vision with you guys. So, Scotty. Um, yes. We can only see your team page. We can't see your slides. Oh, really? Okay, let me get yeah. that. Um, thank you. Let me try this again. Okay, this should show it. Oh, I know what it did. Can you guys see it now? Okay, awesome. So here was a slide I had before. Um, I made this image from after I read The Miracle Morning. I made it and put it on my own Facebook page. Uh, and then, so, okay, this is one of my favorite, um, not my favorite, but this is from the 80s. This is a vision statement from the 80s. What I want you guys to know about your vision statement is it doesn't matter if people think you're crazy, okay? Right? It doesn't, doesn't matter. I mean, look at this one. Microsoft in the, in the early 80s, a, this was their vision for their company, uh, what they talked about. A computer on every desk in every home running Microsoft software, okay? That was a vision statement that they created back in the 1980s. And it's, nobody had computers in their homes at that time, right? Nobody had computers in the home. And I think about Team Beachbody, and if you are plugged in like you should, listening to Carl Deichler on his live videos, on national wake-up calls when he comes on, on the surges, he has he, the vision, if you think about it, it, says every single person will have a beach body coach, right? That's, what, that's how he talks. Now, you'll hear other people, and, and you may have these thoughts yourself that say, oh, man, there's, there's already, like, our town only has 50,000 people. There's already 200 coaches. Like, I could never build this business, right? You know, you've had those, some of those thoughts before. Or, you've, or I've heard them often, and, and I'm compelled by listening to Carl saying every single person will have a beach body coach just like they have an eye doctor, just like they have a, you know, a medical doctor. They will have a beach body coach, somebody that helps them prevent the disease in their family by keeping them healthy, fit, and active, and engaged with positive people that aren't poisonous, right? So Carl even has that vision statement like that. He also has a vision statement of, having a million coaches in the United States, right? I remember hearing him talk about that when we had 60,000. Talking about a million coaches and now we have 400,000. So that could have seemed impossible then, but that's the, the vision that he put out. And I'll tell you what I, I said to myself when I heard that. And it, it comes from listening to one of uh, my mentors from before named Craig. I, I remember uh, having a conversation with him and he said, you know, when, when you talk about something like that, we're going to have a million customers, like a million coaches <coughs> in the U.S. Well, he says, if we're going to have a million in the, in the U.S., I want, a, I want a tenth of those in my team, in my organization, right? So you get to decide, like, what you want, what your vision is, what you want that, that team to look like. And it's going to always continually expand and grow. But I see this team in the next just three years as a hundred thousand coaches, right? And I'm very clear on that one, but I'm not clear beyond that. So we, we, we're going to figure this out, but that's a vision statement. Very simple, a computer on every desk in every home running Microsoft software. Like Carl says, um, a beach body coach, every single person in the U S is going to have a beach body coach. So here's, 
I have six elements of a, a good vision statement that I want to teach you guys about. Uh, you can screenshot this if you want so you can develop one for yourself. Um, and like I said in the beginning, that miracle morning I talked about is so that you check regularly what you guys, what your vision statement is. So number one is that it sets a standard of excellence. It sets a standard of excellence. Number two, clarifies direction and purpose. Number three, inspires enthusiasm and commitment. Number four, bridges the present where you're at now and the future. Five, is clear and easy to understand. Number six is ambitious, so it's not limited by current circumstances or what we perceive to be possible, okay? That's the hard part for most of us, is to not limit by current circumstances, right? And, and I remember someone teaching me in the beginning saying, Scotty, as I, you know, I didn't have many Facebook friends. He, he said, like, social media is going to be a huge thing because you can only talk to so many people in person in your hometown. So he said, I do want you to build locally, build a local team, but think global. So when you guys see me making blog posts three times a week in a video almost daily, I'm thinking when we go to Japan, when we go to China, or wherever it is we're going in the future with Team Beachbody, once we take care of the US, I'm thinking bigger so that you know, we, that influence can spread beyond what we have just here. So that can seem impossible right now, right? Does it can seem impossible? Like, how could I have a team in another country? But I mean, I look at Canada and I, I see here on Sean, I see Sean as our top male coach on the team. Like, I, I couldn't see going into another country. I didn't know anybody in Canada when we started this journey, but when Canada opened, we were able to attract in awesome people like Sean, and he's become one of my best friends, right? But that's thinking bigger, having a bigger vision than just like, who are my neighbors, who are my friends, who are my family that I can help? And then as you guys know, many of those people don't want your help in the beginning, right? So it's, it's, you have to think beyond that. So you have to be ambitious. Okay, next one. Here's a couple little samples. So I want you to take mental notes so when you decide what yours is going to be. So Disneyland, create a place for people to find happiness and knowledge. Ford, produce a car that everyone can afford. Girl Scouts, help a girl reach her highest potential. Cirque de Soleil, invoke the imagination, provoke the senses, evoke the emotions. And uh, Zappos, the online service leader. So I have here some steps that kind of goes back on what we talked about before in developing a team vision statement. So, and if you need to take a, take a little screenshot of these, I can send them over later if you guys want on the team page, but make it big enough that there will always be passion and energy as you grow towards it. Number two, word it so it serves as an energy source and rallying point for the organization. Three, imagine it is 10 years out and you are being interviewed by Oprah, what you have achieved, what difference have you made, and what are you proud of, okay? So I put Oprah here, one of the things, an activity that I did in my first year, I remember I was still working at Idaho Steel, and take a mental note of this, I'm going to write it in here. And it's kind of a weird thing to think about at first. You know what an activity that I had a mentor make me do? Write my own eulogy. Okay? Like, like the day comes when I leave this world, what do they say about me? Okay, and it was a huge thing for me because because it took me to another level of the type of difference I wanted to make. Um, you know, I didn't want it to say that I spent 12 hours a day and every Saturday sitting in a cubicle and retired and then passed away two years later at the age of 70. I wanted to say the amount of impact that I made with my life. So whether it's 10 years out, 20 years out, really think about what you want your life to represent. And the people that you influence, the people that you bring into your team, what kind of difference you want them to make. So number four, this is very important. Write it out in the present tense. Okay? Write it out in the present tense. And <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys an example of this. And if you guys know Lindsay Stay, if you don't follow Lindsay, watch Lindsay Stay. She recently became a million-dollar earner with Beachbody. She also... Uh, just hit 15 star diamond a couple weeks ago with her team. Um, I remember going through with her visualization and goal setting 
uh, about three and a half years ago. And we were writing out her goals, and, and as she wrote out these statements that she wanted to accomplish with her team, all of them said, as she, we wrote them out, but when she tried to say them out loud, she said, I hope that I have, and she was talking about income, I hope that I have a six-figure income by, and she had the date. And I was like, no, say, I will have a six-figure income by this date. Because that's what she was striving for so that they could be a full-time family and not work real these other jobs. And she tried to say it again and said, I, well, it would be nice if I could have a six-figure income by. So it was always like that. And I had to work with her until she could say it. I will have. So when you write this out, you've got to write it in the present tense as if it's already happened. So it's like, it's like when you set your goals, like if, if you go back and watch videos when, when this team was a top 10 team, like once a week on a video, I said, this team is in the top five of the company this year. And I, we said that from January through the entire year. And we ended up as a team, number four in the company, this team, number four in the company, but it was written in the present tense. The goals were written in the present tense. So make it a motive. Uh, you want to stir passion within your team. And then number six, summarize the vision statement into a powerful phrase that people can easily grasp. So like NASA's is put a man on the moon by the end of the decade was the central focus of, for thousands of people who work in that organization. And each and every one of them knew that no matter what role they fulfilled, they were a part of the team putting a man on the moon. <clears throat> okay. I don't want to go that one yet because that's, that's going to be my closing one. So actually we'll do it. And then I want to open this up and, and close the screen and chat with you guys for a minute on this. So there's, there's an example, there's a story um, about how you go to work, right? And I know, aside from being consistent, from those of you guys that have a leader, an upline diamond or star diamond that is hit success club every month or building their business, and you're like, what is it? What is, a, what, what is separating me from them? Aside from the consistency, because we all know and you've heard, like if you are consistent with the four vital behaviors and make success club a non-negotiable, goal for you, you will build a phenomenal business for this company. So if you're, if you're doing the actions but not seeing the results, I think this story is one of the best, not story, simple example is one of the best as to, and, and, and really shows you guys with a visual, what a vision will do, like knowing what, what it is, why you're doing it, and what the vision is for your, your team and your business. And I'm speaking as this, your team, your, like we're, I'm going to help create one for this team, right? But you guys have got to have one for your own team because I don't want to be the leader to your guys' coaches. That's your guys' responsibility. Like, I want you guys to be the leaders for your teams. So here it is right here. Um, Charles Schwab said, three men were laying brick. The first was asked, what are you doing? He answered, I'm laying some brick. The second man was asked, what are you working for? He answered, $5 a day. And the third man was asked, what are you doing? He answered, I'm helping to build a great cathedral. Which man are you? So I put three images here. Um, and you can think about your business in this way. So th th there could be three coaches, right? And, and I could come to you or somebody could come to you. They see you doing your business or whatever, working. And they could say, and Sean, I'm just going to say Sean because I see Sean. And this is by no means an example of Sean because Sean's a rock star and almost successful 10 all-star legend. Uh, but... I could come to somebody like Sean. I said, Sean, what is that beach party thing you're doing? You know, and he said, oh, I'm just helping people in challenge groups. Like I'm selling challenge packs or whatever it is. In this case, he comes, we come to this man. What are you doing? I'm laying bricks, right? You go to the next man that's also laying bricks. And you can say, what are you doing? And he could be like, uh, I'm working for $5 a day because I need to feed my family. That's the only reason he's laying bricks that day is for that $5 to feed his family. You can go to the third person and you can say, hey, what are you doing? You know, I see you're over there laying bricks in the, in the sun, 100 degrees out here. You're sweating. You're away from your family. You're laying bricks. What are you doing? And you can say, I'm, I, I'm, taking a hu I'm making a huge role in building this grand cathedral where thousands of people can come and, and you know, celebrate Christ and, and gather in union um, as a place to, to worship right? All three people are doing the same thing. 
But which one is going to be more proud and do a better job at, at what he does as the brick, uh, brick layer? And it's obviously going to be the one that says, I'm helping to build a great cathedral. He sees the vision of his work. He knows exactly what he's doing with his work. So uh, I think it's important oftentimes, you guys could do this in your miracle morning, that we um, evaluate which one are we. Okay? And if you're not the one that you want to be, that's okay because you can change that. So are you just laying bricks? Are you just going through the motions of the four vital behaviors and just doing it half acidly? I don't know if that's a word. Are you doing it just to try to make a few dollars? Or are you doing it to make an impact on thousands of people's health? Are you doing it to to help other parents learn good habits, to teach other parents how not to quit, to teach other parents how to overcome addictions, to teach other parents how to be great examples for their kids, and then the, the impact that those kids go out and make in this world because you helped some mother get a grasp of living life at a better level, and that mother taught her children, and those children became, went out and did amazing things with their lives as well because you took the time to care about them and help them learn how to find purpose in this life. Can you guys see the difference of those three types of beach body coaches? So, guys, when I'm making, so I want, I want to share a little bit of, of my vision with you guys, and then I want to kind of get some ideas from you guys on what we want to stand for as a team. Like, this is Team Dynasty, right? Guys, when, when, I'm, when I do my personal development and I reach out to people and I write a post or I make a video, my goal is that somebody, whether it's a, child of one of the parents or a parent sees that they have a way to change their life. Like they've been miserable in a, in a, like a rat wheel for the longest time, felt hopeless, felt like there was no way out of it and they would be stuck there for the, for the next 20 years till they retire. And I, when I make that video, I hope that it impacts them on a level that they see that they can make a change. Here's the thing about me guys. I don't care if they join Beachbody or not. I know that Beachbody is an amazing avenue, that if they follow the four vital behaviors, their life will completely change, anybody. But if they just wanna do the workouts and they don't buy them from me, and they watch my videos, and they leave their job to go make fishing rods, <laughs> because I taught them that it's okay to go after and do what you want in life and not work for somebody else for the rest of your life, that's, I get so fired up on that still. I have a, a girl as an example I'm going to share with you right now just so you can see that bigger vision. Like when you, it's a bigger vision like that, you're not sad about a return or if somebody buys a program somewhere else and not through you because your picture and vision is much bigger than selling them something and making a $20 commission or a $30 commission. Like if you help enough people, the income will be a direct reflection of that. So you've got, but you've got to be a much bigger thinking thinking person than that. You've got to be thinking five years, 10 years out. So I got this lead named Kaja and she's lost, like she's lost like 50 pounds and looks phenomenal. Completely different woman. I've invited her to coach sneak peeks. I asked her what she thought. Not for her. She continues doing the workouts, continues drinking Shakeology, but she's been watching all my videos and she said by me coaching her and helping her uh, build the confidence to get the body that she wanted, that she's, you know, thought that she lost after having kids. Now that she's healthy, fit, and built this confidence, she left her job, remodeled her basement, got a permit with the city, and now runs a daycare so that she can be home raising her kids. And I'm stoked on that, right? She's not doing beach body coaching, and I'm okay with that. So that's what it means to have a much bigger picture. Like, I'm, I'm looking at Sean again, and I don't see Eric Myers on here, but he may be. Like, Sean and Eric and I, we talk about 10 years from now, like hosting events across the USA, doing personal development speeches, and we pack rooms with 10 to 15,000 people. And we teach them the stuff that we've learned as Beachbody coaches. All this stuff we're studying and learning and applying is, like, that is a bigger vision that we're looking at, and we plan on making an impact like that. So... Like, that's what I see. 
um, for, for this team, for that's kind of my vision is like, that's what I want to do with my life. I fall in love with, with studying, learning things that I struggle with, overcoming them and then teaching other people. So, um, I'm, I'm building the cathedral, right? And, and it, if you look over the picture on the left, it takes one brick at a time and those bricks for you guys, but you've got to do it with that right mindset with a bigger vision or when it gets hot or it gets hard or you build a wall and a big storm comes up and knocks the whole wall down. If you don't have a bigger vision of that cathedral, you're going to stop. You're going to quit and you're going to have to start over someday. So, but when you have that bigger picture, that vision of that cathedral you're building, those storms that come, the, the hot days, the hard times, that bigger vision is going to pull you through it. It's going to pull you through it and you're going to stay excited about it. So, okay, that's kind of what it means to have a bigger vision for your team. So I'm going to stop the share so I can see you guys. I don't like doing slides, to be honest. I like seeing you guys. <laughs> there you are. Okay. Raise your hand if you want uh, to, to create a bigger vision for your life and for your team that, that pulls you to wake up and work on this thing. Okay. Uh, I want you guys to know that even when you have a great vision for your life and for your team, it's still going to, some days are going to suck bad and you're not going to want to do it. And, and I'll tell you guys, like I woke up this morning pushing for this 15 star diamond team. I know that I didn't do as much as I should have. And I woke up and it took me like, and I talked to Sam, I see Samantha on here. I did a call with Samantha today and I was like, Samantha, like I, like I read, I listened to Eric Thomas. I listened to Inky Johnson. I listened to Les Brown. I read some Dave Ramsey leadership. I did my body beast workout. I had some E&E. &E. I had two Shakeologies and I still didn't feel like working. That's what I told her. Like I wasn't motivated. And what, what happened, what I did is I told her I had 10 minutes to get on a call with, with, with Samantha. And one thing that I promised myself is that I would always be in state. Like if I have the chance to help somebody, like I'm not going to ruin that chance because I'm in a bad mood or I don't feel like it. So I sat on my back porch in the sun. I shut everything off. I prayed. I meditated. I thought about what I was grateful for. I was grateful I was not in a cubicle like I was four years ago. And I said, what the heck are you freaking complaining about? Like, you woke up at 7 o'clock instead of 4.30 like you used to work out. You, you got your kids to school. You, you worked out when you wanted to. And nobody had to tell you what you have to do today. Like, wake up, right? So even I need to give myself that check sometimes. But it come, you got to slow down enough to realize that sometimes. But I made that promise to myself that I will not show up. And, and if I have 10 minutes or five minutes to make an impact on somebody's life, I'm going to make sure that I don't ruin that opportunity because I'm in a bad mood. Okay. So that's part of like my personal standard that I want, and, but I wanted to share that with you. Even with a clear vision, it's still going to happen. I don't want you to think it's all like roses and Scotty wakes up and skips to the mailbox and <laughs> it's not true. Like you have to work on that. It's just a constant thing that you have to work on. So are you guys willing to work? When work hard, okay. So um, let's uh, let me move this over so we can. I need just someone to write some notes. Okay, I got some notes right here. So thinking of this team right here, and then you guys can take some of these ideas as anybody else says anything. What do we want to be like? <clears throat> like five years from now, I want you guys to know something. We've been there's only in, in this company there's only. 18 teams that have been elite more consecutive years than ours. So we, we have a, a pretty amazing team. Well, that's not what I want. I want to be known by more than that, this team. So I want you guys to uh, unmute yourself and don't be shy. And if, if it seems like out of your comfort zone to say something right now, uh, this is your chance to uh, start stepping out of that comfort zone. What do you want to, and this could be for you personally, I'm going to write down ideas. So we can work on building a statement together, a vision statement of what we want to be known by, what kind of impact we want to make. What comes to your mind? What do you want to be known by? Like five years from now, 10 years from now, after building your team that you're building, and as we build this team with me as, as your leader or your mentor, what do we want to be known by? Let's, you can just unmute yourself or, or chat it and I can unmute you. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Think about like personally. Is that Francisco? Yeah. 
Yeah, let's hear it. What, what do you want to be known by? Oh, myself? Yeah, or for this team, uh, your future team. Um, I guess mine is, uh, I don't know. It, it, I think it, it, there's a lot of uh, people that don't have the, the belief, in, especially in their cells or in, in, in the system, or in general, that, that there are other things, that there's a better way, basically, that there's, there's, there's something that is possible okay. to do, like, like, you, like you're doing, for example. Okay. And, uh, so, it just is kind of that, like, lead by, lead by example, and help other people. Once I do it, do the same thing. That, that's kind of my, okay. my I think. So, so for you, it's, uh, it's, it's create a life that you want to live, right, on your own terms. But then also teach other people, educate other people that there's a better way to live life. Like yeah, I exactly. Because I, I'll give you an example. I have, uh, uh, for example, a bunch of friends and, and they're, they're I, don't, I don't know how to call it, but comfortable, you know, making, making uh, a certain amount, you know, but we're basically just being paycheck to paycheck and, and 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 ever since i was you know younger i always always wanted you know get more and more and and uh, i did the obvious which is go to school get a degree you know it's just like i just you know you know i did i lost my job and then my thing was okay so i could probably you know, work here for the next 20 years or whatever retired and and then they it, it, it they took that away from me and that and that like I told you, I was like a big eye opener and, and, you know, saying, okay, so if I would have been working three or four years on, on, on building something for myself like this, I think I would probably be in a, in a lot better position. So absolutely kind of what I want to, 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 to help people see that there is something better. Awesome. Awesome. So, and so the, you guys don't know that Francisco, he's working with us in our coach basics. He got let go from his job without notice. Right. And, and so it's like, it's one of those things that like, we don't think about, like sometimes we're like, ah, you know, I don't have a big reason. Like, uh, like Scotty had, whereas my wife's at work and you know, like I hear these things all the time. I don't have a big enough reason. Like Tony Robbins calls it like, you got to put yourself five feet from the edge of Niagara Falls. Like what's going to happen if, like Francisco, you put all your time and energy into a job and maybe you can pay your bills. Maybe you're not stressed out, but they just take it away. What would you do then, right? So it's helping people understand, or, or, or we could add to that, Francisco, like helping people be better prepared for the future or for something that can happen. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any ideas? What, what do you want? What? What do you see your team doing, standing for? And you just unmute yourself. I heard somebody. Oh, Sam. Yes. I want to be known as like a positive influence. Positive influence? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm writing all these down. There's too many negative people in the world generally as a whole and a negative outlook on like life itself. Mm -hmm. And too many people are in the mindset of life sucks, then you die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for to change that mindset on people or be an influence on, you know, kind of like going off of what Francisco said, um, to be more of a positive influence and really help people realize that they don't have to think that way yeah just because their friend at work did that or their best friend you know goes out and parties every night and whatever and can't wake up to work the next day or whatever you know what i mean like just things like that it's, you know people need to realize that they need to be their own person do their own thing yep but so i feel like the more positive people are around easier it is it's very hard to get positive when you're negative yeah so you, so you live that example so the others see that and then challenge them to, to, to be that right okay 
I wrote that note down. That makes me think, I love when you share ideas because things pop in your head, right? Um, recently when doing the Miracle Morning, I finally decided because I'm writing every morning and I don't write, I'm going to write a book. Um, I'm not going to tell you the title, but it came to me during the, the, the thing and it kind of has to do with what I want to see in the future. Um, but like one thing as Sam, Sam was talking that um, I don't get annoyed by a lot of things, but I see it as something to strive for, right, on how we can help people and educate people. Like I want this team to be um, the people that come into to my life that I get to teach and help, you know, through these four vital behaviors and, and improve their health and fitness and finances is I want um, – and a lot of times I think we miss the point where we like, we don't think we can make a big difference, but like you can make a difference in just your life in one other person. Like you don't know how, how far that ripple can spread through, through anybody, right. That you impact and in touch um, as you deliver your message. But like I see in the world, right. Like you'll, you'll know somebody in your life. You guys know somebody in your life right now that like Sam said is partying and showing up to late every day that should be responsible. You know somebody that's an alcoholic that, um, or a drug addict or, or any of these things. And as a society, we don't really, here's what I think, we don't really say anything to them. We're just like, oh, it's normal. Like a lot of people are like that. And then you'll see somebody that wants to change their life financially, that want to start a business, whether it's a taco truck or a beach body coach. And all of their friends and people around them say that's the stupidest thing ever. Why would you waste your time and energy on that? Like it drives me crazy to see that people won't tell, won't help somebody that's an alcoholic, but somebody that wants to live healthy. They're like, you're so stupid for trying to do that. And like, that's so dumb. You're trying to get ahead in life and try to make extra buck. Right. Isn't that how people think about entrepreneurs, but then somebody's an alcoholic and you're just like, ah, oh, he's always like that. Like that's his life. Right. So I want this team to be people that help a group of people that help people, you know, overcome addictions like, like all those mentioned above, drug, alcohol, um, you know, food addictions, um, all of that stuff, uh, and, but also encourage people to do what they actually want with their life, right, and not to fall in that trap. And I wrote a thing on here, uh, I'm going to write it in here a little bit more clear, is, okay, this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but it, it, you can't make anything come to reality unless you put it out to the universe, so here it is. You guys heard it first here, and I, I need some help. Um, and it's probably been talked about before, but I even see like what we're doing um, bigger than Beachbody. Uh, specifically, what I've seen with personal development and books and reading. Like I've read over 400 books in the past five years, and seen a lot of other people start to read books and fall in love with that. Like we didn't know what that was before. A lot of us didn't even know those books, know what that genre was, right? Um, I see in the future, like the, the, like what we're doing, educating people on personal development is like, we, I got to figure out a way to articulate this for my personal vision statement, but I see helping people like the school, the education system changing to teaching people more how to be self-reliant, uh, how to believe in themselves, how to set goals in life, how to visualize goals, how to go after them, how hard it's going to be and not teach them how to memorize who is the president of what year. Because we have phones, like we don't, we don't need to spend 12 years memorizing math problems when they can just type it into their phone. Like we need to teach them how to be happy, how to find purpose, how to set goals, how to visualize them, how to surround themselves with good people. And so that's what I, like when I'm working, like as I'm thinking, that's what I want my impact to be long-term as well, is to help people in that aspect. So. I'm going to try to word that into mine, but changing that. So anybody have any other ideas of how, like what you see, what kind of vision you see for your life and what you're doing? Like what kind of impact you want to make? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Yeah. What do you got Matt? And that was that just what you just said about the school thing. And that was awesome because I, I guess I kind of always have had that thought in the back of my head too. So I'm glad you, you said that cause I, that really, I, I felt that. Um, for me, I, I just want people to learn that they don't have to settle and be miserable. And be, just because it's the normal way that everybody else does it. I work for the federal government and it's an office full of miserable people. And I'm one of them. And it's, it's every day. And these people are just complacent. And that's where 
that's where they want to be. And I can't stand it. So I want people to be able to see that they don't have to be that way. And then I also want people to, um, just become healthier and learn to make better choices and, you know, invest in themselves and just not, just not always go for the easy, the easy way out. Yeah. Awesome. Be healthier. I'm writing down these ideas so I can help put mine together. I hope you guys are taking notes on these because you're going to need to write one for yourself. Be healthier. Like as Matt says, I think about, you know, the bigger picture, right? Be on the preventative side of, of people's health. I know we have quite a few nurses on our team that have started beach body coaching because they see too many people come in after the fact and they want to help change that on the forefront. Like, like they, they want to be the soldiers in the, you know, in the trenches, helping people ahead of time. So that's something you could write into it. What other ideas do you have? How, what kind of impact do you want to make? What kind of, what do you see? And this is like bigger, like, this is not like you're going to have your individual why or your reason. Like, like, like if you're like Matt, you know, you personally want to get out of your job or, or be in a more, a place where you're not as miserable or whatever it is, but as a bigger impact, like what do you, what do you want people to remember you as? Like, what did you do for people? Anybody else got any ideas? Anything you want to share? So I'm going to read one. Courtney says, my internet is horrible. Okay. I want to be the person that is known for lifting others up and use my Beachbody career and influence to further help educate and work with children and children's ministries as it is a passion of mine. That is awesome. Right? So that's like a, almost like a clear vision statement of what she's doing right there. Like clearly written out what she wants. Right? If you know that's what the imp impact is going to do with your daily, right? We call it the unsexy inviting behind the scenes, Facebook inviting. Like if you're just doing it to do the motions and invite someone to a coach sneak peek and that's all it is to hopefully get a challenge back sell to hit success club five, like that is not going to be fun. It's going to be miserable 10 years from now. But if you're doing it to influence and educate and work with children in the children's ministry, like that's, that's a much, that's going to pull, that's going to wake you up, right? That's going to pull you forward. And you're not going to be like, Courtney is not going to need me to push her to go to five star diamond and elite because that's going to come as a result of her helping people with this future children's ministry. I love that. Okay. So that's an awesome one. Um, what else? Anybody else got any ideas? Cause the more, more ideas we share, the more you can spark ideas in other people's mind and help other people on this, on this team come up with ideas. I got one. Um, for, yeah. for my team, I really, and, and you just kind of said it, I really like, the fact that um, I don't want my team so much to go after challenge packs because that doesn't work. Um, we're not about getting people. Um, really what it's all about is educating people, educating people on what we do, educating people on how to, you know, improve their lives and what is possible out there for their lives. Um, pretty much for my team, it's good people doing good things for good people. Oh, and that could be, and that could be really wide range right it can be wrapped around our beach body businesses um it could be wrapped around all the personal development that we're reading um but really we're we're reaching out and and i'm doing this more and more lately i'll be honest i've never been a big former it's been a huge struggle of mine um i i i can invite like nobody can invite Right. Like I, I can go out there and do that. I can hit success club 10 every month. Um, but what I've been really focusing is not so much on that number, but I, for the last two, three weeks, I've been really focusing on the people itself. So yes, I might not be getting any short term, you know, um, short term wins, I guess you can say, but I'm really looking for it to be a lot deeper than that for the long term wins with my with my customers and and the people that i'm surrounding myself with so um i really like the, the good people doing good things for good people because that's really what it comes down to i love that I, I wrote that down with a little quote on here so i might be borrowing that as part of mine <laughs> i like that um also with sean's you know his team name that they, they've created is create yourself fitness which is you know creating the person that you want to become like helping people do that um, he's not on here. I don't see, but Jay Teagues, I really love his, 
his motto is do hard things. Like people help people understand that you can do hard things in this life. Um, I'm going to share a couple here. A couple came into the chat box. I'm going to share real quick. So jot down ideas as you get them. I'm, I have like a whole page of notes here. Um, Bonita says, I want to be known as a person who's won at weight loss and lost her 200 plus pounds and gotten to her goal and is the person that others go to it for advice to help um, more obese people change leading always with the heart and helping them to change their life. Erica, Nick Greer say, being that I struggled with self-hatred for so long, I want to be known for helping people truly love and believe in themselves inside and out. Also to help people see that there's a better way of living and that they don't have to live a mediocre life. Um, they're coming in now. I want to read Eric's. Eric Meyer says, I want to help change the way people think about network marketing from something money-driven to something that's value-driven. Dude, that is awesome. He's talking about changing a whole industry, right? I, sorry, I got to take a screenshot of these <laughs> so I don't have to write those all down. Give me one second. I'm screenshotting this. You better give a cheese because you guys are all on here. <laughs> okay. Um, another one. My vision is for the women who are huge sport fans and they are misunderstood, but their friends and families getting ready for the empty nest and empowering them to have a fulfilling life. And it's okay to spend time on themselves and eat healthy and real foods. Awesome. Awesome as well, Terry. Okay. So sparked another idea. Sorry. I'm going to save this chat. I think I can save the chat after the call as well. I'll put it in like a file in the team page. Um, one of, one of mine, like a moment that made a huge difference in my life was uh, a time when when Carl Eichler said something to me when I was in Italy, and I've mentioned it on a couple of calls, but there was a time when like, I was just full of gratitude for being, you know, this team hit number, we were number four in the company, and I knew we could get there. I knew we had the right, the right people to make it happen, which is you guys. And I remember just telling him like, how grateful I was to be working from home. I'd only been working from home probably a year and a half at that time, almost just a little over a year. And I was like, I don't think you understand. And he's probably heard that before, right? Like, like my kids, like my three oldest kids are daughter, they're daughters, right? Like the impact of having their dad be a great example and loving them and being with them, like all of this time, like will completely uh, dic help dictate the way that they choose a spouse in the future. And like, I owe it to the, the, this company for giving me the opportunity to put my heart and passion into this and make this my full-time career. And I was just telling him thanks for all that, right? And, and I remember telling him uh, that, you know, I struggled before in my past with, with alcohol, with, with cocaine addiction, all of those things I struggled with, similar to what, um, kind of like what Erica said in the fact that like, I didn't really accept myself. Like I struggled with self-esteem. And so I did things to fit in like drink so I could get out of, I could be out, outgoing and loud, um, cocaine, the same thing. Uh, like all of those things I did to try to fit in and they were all unhealthy. Every single thing I did like that was unhealthy. And so actually this is going to be going my notes as a way to write this out. They were unhealthy things. And I, would, I told Carl that like beach body, like personal development, awesome friends, like being in the, with the leaders of Beachbody and the other top 10 coaches on that trip, like being around amazing people, being around my challengers, being around people growing and learning, like all of those things and obviously Shakeology to the workouts, everything um, completely changed my life and gave me a way. I told him, I finally feel like I fit in in a healthy way. Like I'm doing good things and I feel like I fit in. Like I'm accepted and I don't have to do stupid stuff. Like I do good stuff and I'm, I fit in now and my self-esteem, like I'm confident. I can look anybody in the eyes now, like confidently shake anybody's hand. Like that's completely changed my life. And I went to this company and he said, and this is part of what I can write out for my vision statement as I jot these ideas down is he said, that is not correct. <laughs> he said, that's not, no, I don't want you to say that. Because if that's the case, you're always, you're still, you're still trying to fit in. You're trying to, and he said, anytime that something else comes in where you feel like you'll fit in, you'll jump to the next thing. He's like, that's not what you want to be. You don't want to be somebody that jumps to the next place that you feel like you fit in. And I was, and he's like, I think the message for you is that you can be yourself 
and teach others to be themselves. And that's all you need to be to become successful is just to truly be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to be like anybody else. Just be yourself and teach other people to be themselves and you'll grow an incredible team and business. And I was like, that's it. So as I, lit, as I talk through that now, right, I've never talked through that, how I could write that out, is I want to help people love themselves and be proud of who they are and who they are becoming. And that just by loving themselves and accepting that, they're going to inspire other people to begin to start loving themselves and, and who they are and who they can become. So there's an idea as well for, for mine. Um, okay, Rob says... He wants to be known as a person that helps the stubborn blue collar or truck drivers that have health issues and don't look after themselves to start doing so before it's too late and they pass away before their time. So he has a, a goal and vision to help the truck, the truck driving industry and the blue collar workers um, like where he's at in, in changing that. Anybody else have anything you want to share? Get it out there. Part of your vision, what, what you want to be known as? Me, I have something. Let's hear it, uh, Lori. Normally at my work right now, I'm known as the fitness guru. The fitness guru. <laughs> yeah, mostly of my coworkers, they are seeing me eating healthy, my oatmeal and everything. And I want to be that person. Yesterday I have a challenger. I didn't know. She never told me that she has a heart issue that her doctor told her do not work out like once in a while. But she's so happy. I was so happy telling me that I motivate her. I inspire her to be better that she's working every day she's so many pounds um and she's healthy even her doctor is happy with her right now so i want to be that person that helps them to be a better version of themselves awesome i like that so look like talk about vision like i'm so excited talking about this that i didn't realize that it was like 808 and i was like totally had a goal to be like a half hour to 35 minutes so i apologize about that um, one thing, I'll write this out. My, my idea is I want you guys to write yours out. I want you to write it out. And even if you only have one coach on your team, I want you to share your vision with your team. I want you to make a video and talk about your vision and the impact that you're going to make. Um, one thing to connect with what Sean was saying, you moved on my screen, Sean. <laughs> um, uh, talking about uh, good people doing good things for good people, not looking at people as challenge pack cells or success club points. Um, for those of you that have never been on this call or haven't seen the, the shout outs, we call it the three lives club with this team. I created that like three years ago. Start looking at people. At, I look at challenge facts as giving somebody the tools to change their life. So I call it the three lives club. It means you've got three people started on a challenge pack. And that was to help me see it in a different light as well because I'm not a number and sales person. So I, I set my goals on how many people I want to give the tools to so they can change their life. So, um, with this being said, uh, you guys have some ideas. I want you guys to write that out. There's, there's a couple things you can do leaving this call. You can say like, oh, that was awesome. I'm motivated and you can do nothing with it. Or you could sit down or spend time tomorrow and you can, can start writing it out and figure out what your vision statement is so that you don't have to be pushed by your coach so that you can be pulled by your vision. And so that you can then, because how many of you guys like if you have to be pushed right now, you, you can pretty much assume that your team and organization will be just like you. They're going to have to be pushed, right? But if you can learn to be pulled by your vision, get clear on that, help articulate your, your vision into your team and teach them to do that, they're going to be pulled by it. And how many of you guys want, want to have people that are pulled by their, a vision of their own and not have to push people? Okay, so that's the that's option that you have coming out of here is to take action on it. Feel motivated and do nothing or feel motivated and take action. Um, and then I want you to think about it in that, in that aspect. As you write that out, are you just laying bricks? Are you doing it to make your $5 or are you doing it to build your cathedral? And that's, I want you to keep that on the front of your mind. Heck, print a picture out of a big cathedral, right? So that when you do your every day, you look up and be like, I put a couple more bricks on that thing today. And like if people tell you, if 10 people tell you no that day, it like, don't matter. I put up 10 bricks. They may not seem like those bricks matter, but that those bricks are important to this entire cathedral and vision that I'm creating for the long run. When you can do that and you show up like that and you love what you do, uh, people are going to sense that. So um, I want to be known, I want you guys, us to be known as, as 
people that are, are change agents. Like we, we help people learn to, to dream again. Uh, like you guys hear me talk about fate. I put my face, your grizzly logo on every picture I do now. Like I, I want to help people, uh, realize that it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to have, have fears that a lot of fears never go away, but that, you know, as we work together as a team, as we have a clear vision and a reason we work together as a team and we share tools with each other, we take those three things and we, we apply those. We can have the courage to face any fear that we have. And that's what I want to help people understand is, is that, you know, you can have that courage to face those fears and get over the things that we've been afraid of in our life. And we can live a life by design and help other people do that as well. So I love you guys. Thanks for being on the call tonight. And I, I got to let you go. I got to get to band because we got a vision of putting our second album out. So I got to go work on that one now, but I love you guys. And, and I'm excited to see, I want to see your visions. If you make a video or a post about it, I want to see it, tag me, put it in the team page, whatever, share it with each other because we can feed off of those ideas together. Okay. Love you guys. Have a great night and uh, share the recording with, with your team, with your coaches. So they know, and are on board with what you're doing as well. See you guys later.